I know. We're just going to wait just one min minute. Uh, Trusty Webs Webster is park park parking the car, so I was told. You told me that, right? Somebody told told me that. <laughs> just give me one. Okay. All right. Well, one min minute passed by really quick. Okay. So let let's go to um one. Oh no. What am I doing? Okay. Um. Good evening, ev ev everyone. It is Tuesday, October 4th, 2022, and it is the regular board meet meeting for the Odalanto Elementary School di District. Okay, uh, 1.002, call to or order. The time is now 5.31. I'm trying to go, go slow. It's okay. Um, 1.03, roll, roll call and quorum estab establishment. Trustee Eckes. Present. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench present. Trustee Webster. Webster present. Trustee Benz. Benz pre present. And I'll take note that Trustee Turner is not here. Okay. Uh, go going on to 1.04, pledge of, of allegiance. Please stand. Place your right right hand over your heart. Ready to be Thank you. Okay, go going on to ad adoption of the agenda 2.01 pro proposed ad additions, deletions, and adjustments in the order of business. Madam President, I do have a couple. Uh, we're adding item 3.02. Uh, we will have also a presentation from uh, Victoria McGathan, Principal Alex Verdusco, and his staff will be presenting tonight. Also, we are pulling item 14.04, that is under consent agenda, academic services, approval of the agreement with Pali Institute for Gus Franklin Science Camp for 2022-23 school year. And also Trustee Turner will be uh, joining us in closed session via Zoom. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, okay, go going on to four closed se session deck declaration madam madam president i'm sorry adoption of the agenda we i'm to... sorry you're That's right okay. i just skipped on by okay uh 2.002 uh, ado adoption of of the uh agenda i i need a mo motion to approve echo sign motion and can i get a sec second webster i second please call for the vote trustee webster aye trustee uh love french aye Trustee Eckes? Aye. Trustee Benz? Benz, aye. Motion, motion pass, passes for zero. Thank you. Okay, now go going on to three spe special rec recognitions. Mr. Krause? Yes, thank you, Madam President, members of the board and community that are with us in person this evening and those of you that are out there in the land of Zoom, we appreciate you joining us this evening. Uh, first presentation, we'd like to call up Mr. Ramon Rizzo, the principal of Adelanto Elementary School, who will be presenting on 9-11, and he has some special guests with him that uh, will be assisting him in this. So, Mr. Rizzo, if you can come on up to the podium and 
we will get you uh, connected over at IT there with the presentation. Can I scoot this back? Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Good evening, uh, Atlanta Elementary School Board. Uh, good evening, Madam President and Superintendent and uh, the Cabinet. Thank you very much for having us here tonight. My name is Ramon Rizzo. I'm the principal for Atalanta Elementary School. And we just recently uh, did the our nine, annual 9-11 event over at our site. Um, it was fortunately this time, this year it was in person. We're so we're excited about that. And for those of you that were present there, thank you very much. Uh, Trustee Eckes and, and Webster, thank you so much for being there and superintendent. And thank you very much, Ms. Benz for being there as well. Um, I do have some students here with me before I uh, start the presentation. Uh, we have Ezra Gutierrez here. We have... Oh, I'm sorry, Eugenia is a very unique name. Eugenia is here tonight. And also we have Layla here tonight, okay? So they're gonna have a uh, part of the presentation where they read. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go over a few slides with you and kind of explain what our process is and, and how uh, our event uh, has been going through the years. It's kind of a school tradition now. So it's been, I believe this year was the eighth year of our 9-11 uh, presentation on site. Even during COVID, we did do a virtual presentation. So that's part of what I'm going to show you today, because obviously we're not there. But uh, we're very excited uh, to be um, continuing that tradition at our school. So if you don't mind, we're just going to get started, okay? So uh, AES 9-11 Day of Remembrance, our eighth annual on campus. So here are a few pictures of some of our previous events and this year's event. Um, so it's a big, big deal on our campus. Uh, the students uh, spend a lot of time with artwork. They write letters to local uh, first responders. Um, obviously, we have special guests that come by. Um, so it's kind of a big deal on our site, uh, the 9-11 Day of Remembrance. We have the color guard. So Lieutenant Colonel uh, Cook was on site from Victor Valley. Uh, no, actually, he's from Riverside Prep, I believe. And uh, he was on site with a color guard as well. So it was a big event, uh, lots of patriotism in the air. Um, so let's go to the next slide. So once again, there's Colonel, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Cook right there with his color guard. And at this time, obviously our Pledge of Allegiance. Next slide. So September 11th, once again, is a day of remembrance for our school site, not only obviously at our school site, but across the country. And so what we do is we start talking about how we will never forget. And we just kind of reiterate that phrase because it's true. We will never forget. Okay, next slide. And um, so from our lower grades, kindergarten, all the way to fifth grade, uh, students participate in singing. Um, a couple of the favorite songs that they sing, obviously, is the Star Spangled Banner, Yankee Doodle. And I, uh, like I said, it's a very, very patriotic um, event, and the kids just really eat it up. They just love it. Next one. So throughout the years, we've had some very, very special guests besides, of course, you guys. Uh, we've had um, the, the county fire chief show up one year. We had the county um, Mr. Lovingood, the county supervisor, show up. We've had VFW. Uh, we've had, obviously, our local um, fire department, our local sheriff's department. Um, so so we, we've hosted lots of great folks at each one of our events. Next slide. So here is where we're going to begin our timeline. And I have, special, I have students that are going to begin uh, with the timeline. So Ezra? Timeline, September 11, 2001. At 8.46 a.m. Eastern Time, American Airlines Flight 11 traveling from Boston to Los Angeles strikes the North Tower of World Trade Center in New York City. At 9.03 a.m. Eastern Time, United Airlines Flight 175 traveling from Boston to Los Angeles strikes the South Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City.
at 9.37 a.m. Eastern Time, American Airlines Flight 77, traveling from Dulles, Virginia to Los Angeles, strikes the Pentagon Building in Washington. At 9.59 a.m. Eastern Time, South Tower of World Trade Center collapses in approximately 10 seconds. At 10.03 a.m. Eastern Time, United Airlines Flight 93, traveling from Newark, New Jersey to San Francisco, crashes in a field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania. At 10.28 a.m. Eastern Time, North Tower of World Trade Center collapses in the time between the first attack and the collapse of both World Trade Centers was one hour and 42 minutes. All right, thank you. Next slide. Excellent job, guys. So uh, we do talk about, in this presentation, we do talk about the devastating um, loss of life. So um, total 2,753 people at the World Trade Center are killed, 184 people are killed at the Pentagon, and 40 people are killed in Pennsylvania. Next slide. So what I do to try to kind of bring the event um, a little bit closer to home, we read off some names of uh, our local uh, folks that that were part of and unfortunately uh, were killed that day. So th we have several names on here. Uh, for example, Alan Bevan, he's from Oakland. Uh, Yania Betru from Burbank. Um, Carolyn Bugue from Santa Monica. So just to kind of... Uh, so that the kids can understand that it really affected folks from all over the country and all over the world. Next slide. So as part of our presentation, we do uh, the uh, address from uh, President uh, uh, George Bush that addressed the nation that night, that very night of 9-11. And so we play part of that um, presentation. Also the fireman uh, moment of silence as well. So, um, you know, a student with about 260, uh, uh, a school with about 260 kids, and of course, all of our staff and um, our PTA. So the quad area is filled with, with folks. And during the moment of silence uh, with the, um, the bell from the fire department, I mean, you can't hear a pin drop. It is the most quiet thing. And the kids are very, very respectful during that moment. Next, next slide. Um, so obviously the devastation from 9-11 um, uh, was real and uh, horrific, but there is the Freedom Tower that represents what is there now, and uh, the height of it is 1776. So if you know your, your American history, you know what 1776 is. So the height from the bottom all the way to the top of the tower, and that includes the antenna, is 1,776 feet. Next slide. So um, once again, our kids get really into artwork. And like I said, um, they do, they write letters to first responders. Um, they do very patriotic posters. Uh, we love you, we miss you, uh, we will never remember. Um, we see the heroes. And once again, when we have our first responders there visiting, it just makes everything extra special. Next slide. I think that's it. I think that's it. So that's our 9-11 presentation. Okay, uh, board, can can we go take take a pic picture with with our group and the Twin tow tow Towers, please? Mm. They have the towers.
Hey, board, do you have an, any com comments? Oh, I just want to say that that is just awesome. I think it's great that we're remembering this and we're teaching the kids to remember it. I'm not going to get all emotional, but it is beautiful. And just thank you. Trusty La La French. Um, I want to say um, I appreciate the mandate the students who are like their parents bringing them here tonight. Microphone. I always forget. I want to thank the uh, students and the students' parents for making sure that, you know, they got here tonight to be able to um, to show and to express what they've learned and how well they speak, you know, at the podium. I'm so proud of them. Anytime our students get up and they're not fearful and they just get up and they, you know, just speak from, you know, their heart, you can tell that, you know, that the teachers have worked with them. I appreciate it. I walked through the, I was like, oh my God. We have a full house here tonight. Mm -hmm. I, think, <laughs> I think the parents, though, for taking the time out in order to um, support and bring your students here tonight. Thank you. Um, good evening, everybody. I want to start by telling Mr. Rizzo, thank you so very much. I think taking the moment to remember significant events like this is a like very important part of education. It allows us to not only learn history, but also be a part of it. Um, as for this amazing display, I got to see it at the actual event, and I do have to back Mr. Rizzo. It is a beautiful, phenomenal event. So I am very thankful that we got to see another one tonight, and I will hand it over. All right. Thank you. I, I was ab able to go, and I was on honored to go and I pre appreciate the staff and the stud students of AAES. They were all very, very respectful during during the whole time and the kids were so patient because you know they want to do other other things. The art was phenomenal nominal i got to see the the essays i think it was third grade wrote and the draw drawings that went with with them and i truly do appreciate it good good job coog coog cougars all right so now we are go 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 going on to Victor victoria mcgathan i'm sorry i just went going Yes, Madam President, members of the board and members of the community that are with us this evening, I'd like to call up Principal Alex Verduzco, who will also have some special guests this evening that uh, he would like to showcase. And so, Mr. Verduzco, take it away. Thank you. Well, good evening, Madam President, esteemed board, uh, executive cabinet, um, interim superintendent Kraus, and guests. Today, we are going to present, Victoria McGaffin is going to, well, I'm sorry. I'm Alex Verdusco, principal at Victoria McGaffin Elementary School. And today, what we're going to do is I have a group of students and a couple of my teachers that are going to present an abridged version of what we did for our Hispanic Appreciation or Hispanic Heritage Month parent assembly. And we have two groups of students. One is going to perform a short song, very short. And right after that, we have a couple of students that are going to present a biography that they have also done on two prominent Hispanic uh, uh, celebrities, uh, to say it otherwise. And so they'll present with that. So once the musical number happens, no applause, please, because the, the students are going to come in. So it's uh, two fourth grade students. One is uh, Lexi Balderrama, and the other one is Christopher uh, Guevara. And so they're going to come up, present their thing, and then that's it. Then we can applaud. Thank you. So with much ado, I guess, uh, I, I'll just continue right now. We have uh, Miss Smith and fifth grade teacher also, DI teacher, Mrs. Sandoval, and they are having their students perform. Here we go. <laughs> Oh. 
Oh, Hello, my name is Christopher Guevara, and I will be doing Benito Juarez. He was an orphan at the age of three and raised by his uncle and aunts and spent most of his youth working in the cornfields. He was elected as president from 1858 to 1872. He was the 26th president of Mexico. He could be seen on the 20 peso bill and the 500 peso bill. His famous quote was, among individuals as among nations, respect the rights of others is peace. Viva Mexico! Hi, my name is Lexi, and today I'm going to be doing Juan Toscano Anderson. He's a Mexican-American. He's a famous basketball player. Juan was born in 1993, April 10. He lived in Oakland. He's a professional for the Los Angeles Lakers of the National Basketball Association. He loves letting people know where he's from. He wears it on his chest and back every time he puts on his Golden State Warriors jersey to represent the the 95th Avenue in East, Lo East Oakland. Juan Anderson's famous quote, if I can change a life, my job is done. Thank you guys. Now, as you can imagine, when we did 
the celebration in the auditorium, we had another class also participate. So we had approximately 100 students with flags going throughout the auditorium. So it was a wonderful show. Thank you, everybody. You guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so of course we have, have to take a group photo, photo up in the front. You can't, can't escape it. Uh, we'll start with you, trust Trusty Web Webster. Oh, wait, I start on the other end. We gotta go there. Right. Right. You gotta pick on me eventually, right? There we go. Oh, where is he? Let's go ahead and do com comments real quick. A special thank you to Mr. Verdusco. I, I do have to say, I always love your presentations and your kids. You are phenomenal. You should be very proud. And parents, thank you. Thank you for sharing the amazing little joys that you brought into this world. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for supporting your students. Thank you for supporting AESD. Thank you. Trust, Trustee Eckes. Well, thank you for coming tonight. That was very kind of you. This was beautiful. Your flags are amazing and your energy is just contagious. So thank you for coming. Thank you parents for bringing them. Please feel free to come to any board meeting in the future. And I wanna see these kids back again. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, trusty love French. Well, I thank you for this energy. In microphone. Sorry. I'm gonna I thank you for the energy that you brought here tonight. And if we could have another song next uh, time we meet, we can make this something that we do every Tuesday. It would be wonderful <laughs> because it would have us be hyped and get energy. And thank you very much. Okay. Um, I want want to say that Vic, Vic, Victoria McGath Gathen School always seems to pull off huge hits. I have been ab able to to go go to in in international night, which I thought was a huge success. Seeing so many many fam families and seeing all the per perform performances, it was one wonderful. The fifth. Fifth grade pro, pro, promotion, motion. Mrs. Sand, Sandoval, the way it was dec, decorated was amazing. And now this, it's all, always a, a joy to see. And I'm so proud. And I thank you. Thank you so much for take, take, taking time 
out out of your your day to come here and do do the, this for for us. We truly do appreciate it. Thank thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so now we have to go on to the work part. So sad face. No, okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead. I think that's it. Do we have anything else? That's it. Okay, that's it. So I will go on to four closed ses session de declarations. We will be take taking ID items 4.0. 02 and 4.003 into closed ses session. Uh, down to five pub public test testimony be before closed session. Um, do, do I have a rep representative from A A D T T A spe speaking on closed ses session? I do not have a request for closed session, Madam President. Okay, how about C C S E A? I do not have a uh, request for closed session, Madam President. Okay. Do we have um, go going on to five point zero zero three? Do do we have odd audience mem members? Uh, let me refer to uh, Miss Levay. Miss Levay, did you get any handwritten uh, request to speak this evening? I do, but it's for open session. I do see someone that has uh, Stacy has put in for a closed session, but that would have to be an open session item, so we can come back to her. Okay. Okay, then. So then we will re recess to close ses session. Can can I get a mo motion to, can I get a motion? I guess I motion. I guess. And can I get a sec second? Left branch, I second. Okay, call for the vote. Christy Webster. Webster, aye. Christy Left French. Left French, aye. Christy Eckes. Aye. Trusty Benz. Benz, I motion motion pa passes for zero zero. The the time is now six o two. Here. We'll have it on there. We can start talking about. Get a final that goes out to
Okay, it is now seven, seven o'clock. Uh, re reconvene to op op open session session. Uh, seven seven point zero zero one. Call to or order. Okay. Seven point zero zero two. Roll roll call and quorum estab establishment. And the time is now seven p.m. Trustee Eckes. Uh, present. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench present. Trustee Webster. Uh, Webster present. Trustee Ben. Ben's pres present. Uh, quorum is estab established. Uh, there were no closed ses session eyed items to report out. So now we mo move on to nine Pub public test testimony. Mon money. Do I have a rep representative from ADTA? Mr. Snodger, do you see uh, someone in on Zoom from ADTA? I believe Jennifer Radar. Thank you, Ms. LeVay. You're welcome. Mr. Snodger, if you can ask Ms. Radar to unmute and welcome to the board meeting. I do not see Ms. Radar. Oh. Okay, we'll we'll come back 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 to her. Do do we have have a speak speaker from CSEA? Madam President, I believe we have Diane Lynn. Okay. Mr. Sinatra, if you can ask her to unmute and welcome Ms. Lynn to the board meeting this evening. You may unmute now. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Well, good evening, President Benz, trustees, um, cabinet, classified staff, Mr. Kraus, certificated staff, and all others attending this meeting. Uh, it's so nice to see our classified open positions being filled. I'm hoping we will have more vacancies filled soon. I am confident that the classified job fair played an instrumental part in hiring and filling our open positions. Um, I would like to give uh, a shout out to our HR department, Mr. Moran and his staff. Thank you so very much. I noticed that on this agenda, 14.25 certificated uh, personnel, certificated substitutes, long-term incentive stipend. For years, we have always had an incentive for long-term subs. Beginning this year, our certificated subs were not compensated for the extra work for long-term um, and all that they do, grading papers, report cards, lesson plans, conferences. At George Magnet, we had an open position. I did ask four different sub subs if they would consider taking the long-term. They all said no. When I asked why, the re reply was, why should I take a long term with all the extra work and not get extra compensation? In reality, who really is losing because of this decision? It would be our students. Having different subs every day, it just doesn't work. I'm hoping 14.24 is passed so we can do what we do best, educate our students to, to the best of our ability. Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, um, we'll go. We'll go. Go ahead and go with the speak speakers in house, and then the one, ones online, and we'll see if that gives um, Jen Jennifer Raid Raider time to get back back online. Great, thank you, Madam President. Our first speaker we'd like to welcome to the podium this evening is Ms. Risa Barrias.
Good evening, board, executives. Please visit Columbia. Please. My son went to PE three times today because they didn't have enough subs to make sure that he could actually get an education. There's a kid that another teacher told me was in PE six times. They had one actual class today. We as parents are in the dark about what's going on with our, our school's administration. I was hoping that there would be a closed session declaration about that tonight. I waited a couple sessions because I know that personnel matters are really sensitive. And there are some things that have to be handled in a sensitive way. And we can't know what's going on in depth. But right now, we don't have a principal and we're down an assistant principal. We're down to one administrator. And I don't think most of our parents even know. Meanwhile, our kids are struggling. We don't have enough teachers for all of our kids. We don't have enough subs to cover for our lack of teachers. This is our kids' life. These are our kids' lives. These are their education. Please visit Columbia, spend the day. Don't just do a you know nice one hour tour where you get to hang out with ASB and get to see the highlight reel. Spend the day on the campus, please. In lighter um, kind of information, I just wanted to flag that the Mojave Air Quality Management District offers um, grants through the Mojave Environmental Education Consortium for environmental related field trips, um, you know, buses to, a, to environmentally related, um, again, field trips, and also campus projects like community gardens on our campuses. Um, so I just wanted to flag that that is available for our kids, especially for the campuses. I know on Columbia's campus, we have a really huge patch of open dirt. And I think it would be really cool for our kids to have a garden. So um, just want to make it um, everyone aware that that is um, something that exists. So again, please spend some time at Columbia. Our kids really need your support. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Now, Madam President, we'd like to call Ms. Michelle Walden to the podium. Welcome, Ms. Walden. Shorter than her. All right. Good evening, board. Thank you for allowing me to speak. In my hands, you will see a stack of paper. This is how many classes are being subbed daily at Columbia. This many. In the seventh grade alone, we currently have six classes of history with 185 students who have a sub. Science, nine classes, 275 of our seventh graders have subs. Special ed, language arts. I just found out one of our teachers is moving. She's transferring to another school. So now we're gonna have a, a SPED language arts, six students, no teacher. A SPED history with, again, no teacher, six students. Eighth grade is where we are getting hit the worst. Language arts alone, we have five classes, 115 students, no teacher. Math, five classes, 149 students, no teacher. And that's because this teacher transferred. The stress has overcome all of us. Science, eighth grade, 174 kids, five classes. History, four classes, 115 students. Our mixed grades, our ELD A and B, who are our lowest, our lowest band. We have a class, again, that math teacher who left. 
33 students. Special ed, ELD, that teacher is also transferring. Six students. Drama class, their first drama class on campus. 25 kids, no teacher. Life skills, one class, 34 students. Language arts support, one class, 18 students. All of these numbers are shocking and unacceptable. Every day when the day starts, Miss Mariana and Miss Rubio, as wonderful as they are, they have to sub 48 classes before the day even begins. And that's before any additional call outs. Teachers are calling out because they are stressed, they are exhausted, and they don't know what's going on. They have an admin, as you all know. Now down to further security, as again, another security guard is just transferred. I have several other teachers who are saying they want to transfer. You guys keep saying you hear us, but you're not listening. The kids are breaking up their own things. Security's not even getting there. What's going on? Because we don't have adequate coverage when it's lunchtime. We have one bathroom that's open during lunchtime. Yeah. Because security can't watch the other bathroom while they're at lunch. Okay, thank, thank you, Ms. Wal Wal Walden. Madam President, I believe Ms. Radar is now in the uh, Zoom meeting. Mr. Sinatra, do you see her? She is in. I'll ask her to unmute now. All right. Welcome, Ms. Radar. I've asked her to unmute. Just waiting. Hello? Yes. Can, you hear, can you hear me now? Okay, great. Thank you. I apologize. I was on my way to be there in person and I'm still driving on the road. So I, I apologize for not being there earlier. Um, I've been listening to my colleagues um, speak and I'm, I'm sad and uh, distraught actually. Uh, good evening, trustees, cabinet, superintendent Kraus and stakeholders. I hope you know that I strive always to highlight the positive things that are happening at AESD. But uh, tonight kind of feels like a, a dumpster fire, honestly. Um, here are some positive things that I found to note. Our vacant positions in the district have re been reduced from 17 to only six. I'm excited to welcome the new teachers as soon as possible. Uh, Mr. Krause has been extremely responsive to, our, to some of our immediate needs, specifically making sure that Chromebooks and Chromebook carts are being delivered to the sites that have requested them. Uh, staff transfers had been handled efficiently and well, and teachers are being welcomed at their new sites with open arms. We are, after all, a family of teachers, and we support one another. And part of that support this week has come and is still coming in the form of breakfast and lunch being brought to all of our teachers at every site, fine tuning. It has been such a pleasure to visit the sites and meet not only the truth is that you have hired gold standard people. Each individual at AESD is a valued member of this community and should be rewarded with gold standard treatment. Even our substitute teachers, they are so important to us. There is no underestimating the importance of the peace of mind when we have to would be absent for whatever reason, knowing that our students are being cared for and taught in our absence. Especially the long-term substitutes taking over an entire class with all the responsibilities of a regular teacher. I'm so glad to see that there is now a provision for an incentive bonus for the long-term substitutes. However, all is not well in Atalanta School District, as you've heard this evening. Student absentee rates are far too high. <clears throat> there seems to be an apathy towards school attendance and we need to take steps to, to promote attendance again. 
Incentives such as perfect attendance awards and drawings <clears throat> and competitions will help get the kids to school, but teachers and schools can only go so far in promoting and rewarding attendance. There must be an intentional campaign from the district, perhaps with radio ads or billboard signs to raise awareness for the parents. Once a month, every administrator is away from their site at a management meeting during the day. A teacher in charge is in the office and a substitute teacher is in that class as every admin everywhere is at a meeting at the same time. This occurs and the middle school students know it precisely when it is. They own the school for at least those few hours. This was a practice put in place by Dr. Mitchell and he's no longer here. In the past, these meetings were held after the school day. Please bring back that practice. Our sites do need the leadership of our administrative management team or perhaps they're not as valued for their job at their school either. I'm here to tell you every member of AESD is an important piece of our puzzle and no one is in distress. As the programs we purchased are not working correctly, some students still do not show up and if they do show up to the Zoom class, they complete no work whatsoever. Some of these families has the same problems as last year's year. And the only result is that these students are falling farther and farther behind. They lack workbooks in every subject and the ingenuity training they were supposed to receive was actually only the pr promotional information. So the teachers still cannot utilize the program fully. There should be Hello. Did we lose her? Did we lose you? Yeah, she just dropped. Yeah, I think she said she was driving. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and go on to the next. Yes, Madam President, we'd like to welcome Ms. Combs. Um, Mr. Sinatra, do you see her in the Zoom meeting? I am asking them to unmute now. Great, thank you, welcome. Okay, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Okay, great. Uh, good evening, AESD family. I'm here tonight to talk about our ailing family member, Columbia Middle School. Um, I have been a public school educator for 34 years, the past six of which I've taught music at Columbia Middle School. I used to really enjoy my job. I still do. Most of the time, I love the students who choose to study music, and I often open my classroom for tutoring or extra practice time, sometimes just a chat or a quiet place to retreat before school or during lunch when it lines up with my lunch or my prep period. But I'm losing that opportunity because nearly every day now I'm asked to sub for another teacher during my prep period. And lately, I've also had students added to my regular classes in groups of nine or 10 from classes for which no subs were available. This morning, I had 10 language arts students in my band class. That was an interesting challenge. We have unfilled teaching positions with full classes. We have teachers who are out on medical or other types of leave. And in a school that should have three administrators, we only have one who knows our staff and students with occasional help from other district sites and, and people will show up occasionally, but uh, we're frequently missing security and other staff members. And we continue to lose more staff members to other schools in the district, which is distressing. It's beginning to feel like Columbia is being dismantled by the district and it's very distressing. While I understand that certain issues are confidential and cannot be shared publicly, I would like to know when we start to consider these understaffing problems a safety issue for students and staff. When is it going to make a change in whether we stay open or not? I mean, when we have so few adults on campus that we're shoving kids into PE classes and into band classes because we don't have enough coverage. When, when does that become a safety hazard? And, and it's really a concern. Those of us who are here every day are suffering from exhaustion, mental exhaustion, emotional and physical because we're all overextended. We want to give our students our best. They deserve our best. 
but we end up shortchanging them and ourselves because of these extra demands. The students are losing instruction time and we're losing the opportunity to give the students the very best that they deserve. Even getting our classrooms cleaned and vacuumed is now down to just two days a week. I mean, it's not what our kids deserve. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Madam President, we did have someone earlier that had wanted to speak to closed session, but it was an open session item. We have not seen them in the meeting. Mr. Snatcher, if you could just look again for Ms. Lighton. Do you see her? I know we had looked earlier for her. I still do not see her in the meeting, no. Okay, thank you very much. Madam President, that concludes our public comments this evening. Okay. Okay, let, let's go on to 10 cab, cabinet re, reports. Yes, thank you. Good evening, Madam President, members of the board, members of the community. I want to first thank our public speakers every time we have them, whether it's for open session or closed session. Uh, I know I can, I can tell you that cabinet hears you. We take copious notes. The board hears you. And we are actively speaking about Columbia, just to let you know, Mr. Moran and his team, and he'll speak to this maybe in a minute, uh, all of the efforts that his team is working on to ensure coverage over there. Um, I will tell you that every day in the district, uh, we do have about 50 to 60 um, staff members out, teaching staff out on a daily basis, just to give you an idea of the coverage that we have to get. And unfortunately, in the high desert, the sub pool is the same for all the districts, Apple Valley, Asperia, Victor Valley Union, Victor Elementary. So we're all pulling from the same pool of subs. Um, so we do try our best to keep those subs. And this evening, there's actually an agenda item where we are looking to keep some of our long-term subs and help them with their uh, permits and credentialing. So I'm excited to have that item on the agenda this evening. Thank you to Mr. Moran and his team uh, for helping us out with that. I do want to thank uh, Adelanto Elementary School again for their presentation this evening on 9-11 and Victoria McGathan Elementary for their presentation for National Hispanic Heritage Month. I had the opportunity to go over to Westside Park and, and Principal Pantoja and all of the teachers and staff over there this week with Dr. Dweizen and actually see a presentation over there for uh, they did it up on the stage. The students came up there and did a great uh, song and it was just a, you know amazing to see. We even had a teacher who... Uh, admitted that he's never really been out there singing before. He grabbed the microphone and did a great job on the song that he sang, uh, Mr. Miranda. So I appreciated uh, him getting up there and taking that courage to go up there and do that. So a uh, great opportunity to showcase. And then we had the opportunity to look in one of the rooms that uh, showcase some of the artwork and other things that the students had created and, and parents were there. So it was an exciting time. I do wanna mention that uh, we are uh, actively looking at bringing a policy to our board to the district related to Narcan and fentanyl. If you're not aware of fentanyl, it's one of the most dangerous drugs in the United States and not, if not the world. Very small amount can kill you uh, if you touch it or if somebody's exposed to it through perhaps they think that it's candy because that's what we're starting to see, especially in the high desert where this drug is being incorporated into what looks like candy. But one of the things that is a lifesaver is this drug called Narcan. And basically, if somebody's overdosing and if they get administered Narcan right away, it could save their life. And so there's an active push statewide uh, through a partnership with the state of California and the California Department of Public Health to ensure that all districts have access to Narcan. And we are actively working on a board policy we will bring to the board for review. And then also our goal is to have Narcan available in all of our schools and then train our staff to be able to use that in the event that uh, God forbid, should there be an overdose, but it's another way that we want to protect our staff and our students uh, from this dangerous drug that's out there. It's, 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 it's just so dangerous. And I encourage parents to do research if you haven't heard of fentanyl and the effects of it. And we're also, uh, Dr. Dwizan and her team are going to be pushing out a lot of information related on how to identify it, how to uh, mitigate it, how to talk to your children about it. So um, and we're also working on that through our school site administrators of working with staff and students. So I wanted to mention that's such an important um, thing that we educate our community on as we move forward. I will let you know that uh, coming up is uh, fall break and our students will be getting uh, some relaxing time and our staff will be getting some relaxing time um, October 10th through the 17th. Uh, students is non-student days, October 10th through the 17th are non-student days. But on the 17th, we are providing, Dr. Dwyer, and I'll mention this, professional development for our staff on the 17th. And then all, all students and staff will be back on October 18th. So looking forward to a little rest and relaxation there. 
I want to thank uh, Morgan Kincaid and Gus Franklin. If you look in the back of the boardroom on the walls there every month, we have a couple of sites that do decorations. And this month, we are excited to uh, have Morgan Kincaid come and decorate on one side of the room and Gus Franklin on the other side of the room. So uh, thank you to the staff and the students out there that uh, helped make that happen. I also want to thank our transportation staff. I know it hasn't been easy this year uh, with the... Um, the amount of drivers statewide, there's a shortage of bus drivers statewide. And, and I really want to thank uh, the transportation staff, the work that they are doing, uh, the routes that they have to take, the extra work that they have to do in order to ensure that our kids are to school uh, safely. And I appreciate all of the hard work that they do as well. And then last but not least, before I turn it over to uh, our other cabinet members, uh, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so this evening, I'm wearing a pink tie in recognition of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, if you know anybody that's been affected by that, it's a, it's a terrible disease. Cancer is a terrible, terrible disease. Um, my brother uh, passed away two years ago from cancer. Um, he would have been uh, 49 this month. And so I, I, I'm a big advocate for any kind of cancer. Um, and, and awareness is huge for me. And so I, I appreciate if you can help spread the word on, on helping find a cure and, and just educating people on, on uh, early detection. I think for anyone that, that you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity just to encourage them to uh, seek out an annual physical and, and make sure that they're doing what they need to do on that. But um, just want to bring that up for awareness for the month of October. And that concludes my comments. I'm now going to pass the uh, baton to Dr. Dwizen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Krause. So good evening, Board President Bintz, Board of Trustees, AESD staff and community. I'm excited to share uh, a few highlights from our Academic Services Division this evening. So uh, last Thursday, we held our first District Advisory Council of the year. Um, we had a great meeting learning about the role of, D of DAC um, with a little over 20 people in person and online. Um, so all of our meetings this year are hybrid. So we welcome any and all visitors. We look forward to our next meeting next month, where we will have nomination and elections of officers for the school year. Um, tonight, you will see two board policies up for review, the first being the second reading and um, approval for independent study, and a first reading on the updated board policy and administrative regulation for bullying. Um, Academic Services is committed to bringing uh, the board policies, bringing them up to date, and so you will continuously see those, and uh, Mr. Krause already alluded to the Narcan. Um, and making sure that um, our students are safe. So um, those two are on the um, docket for tonight. On Monday, October 17th, uh, we are proud to host our second professional development day for the year. Um, that uh, board, you have a copy of the agenda for the day. Um, you At this PD, we will engage all teachers in peer alike discussions around early literacy, math, educational technology, um, English language development, PE, and SEL. So we invite our board members to attend and drop by. It'll be at Melva Davis on the 17th. We begin at 7.30 with breakfast in the quad and we'll end by 2.30 that day. Um, I have also shared a flyer with you that we will be releasing uh, to the public. It's actually probably already on the website. Um, for our school choice applications, we're going to start that process earlier this year. We're going to open that up in December. Um, and so we're excited at already gearing up. It's weird. We have one foot in this year still, but we're already gearing up for next year. So um, that's coming. And then I just would like to take this time to thank um, our academic services team. Uh, business services and HR for the collaboration. Um, it's been a, a fast first quarter of the school year, but we are excited at what's to come and we just thank everyone um, for their collaboration and teamwork and we want to wish all AESD staff a restful fall break. Thank you, Mr. Okay, thank you. Good evening, President Bentz, trustees, Mr. Krause, district colleagues, and community members. Again, thank you for the opportunity to have us share. So I'd like to uh, thank uh, Dana and Alejandro from our HR office who attended the fall festival at Hook Park this past Saturday. Uh, they had a table there promoting our district with their new uh, Easy Up tent that had our district logo on it. 
Um, they interacted with hundreds of community members and made connections with the outside agencies that were present um, there. Besides it being a beautiful day, uh, I know they had a little challenge with the wind. Um, uh, we also, uh, the HR is, is offering a second full day orientation for at West, at West Creek Elementary for our uh, teachers that are in PIPs or STIPs uh, permits. Uh, Vicki Bell, our induction program agency rep, and Dana Curtis will be working with our new teachers on, on supporting them with signing all of their application documents uh, so that they can uh, move forward in getting their preliminary, preliminary credential. So I'd like to thank them for that. Uh, in addition, I'd like to announce uh, that USC's uh, School Leadership Academy is offering and recruiting um, their program. I want to announce to our certificated teachers about a flyer that we will be sending out tomorrow. Uh, USC is currently recruiting for their new cohort for anyone interested in obtaining a preliminary administrative services credential. Uh, this credential would allow you to seek administrative positions in the district. The next cohort runs from January 2023 20, through May of 2024. It's a 15-month program, fully online, two nights a week, and it's designed for working professionals with guided field work. So if you're interested, uh, please look for that flyer that we will send out tomorrow. Um, I do want to quickly address the, the question about subs. So currently in our neighboring high desert communities, um, Adelanto has uh, the highest rate uh, for day-to-day -day subbing at 250. Uh, Victor L, Victor Union, Apple Valley, Hesperia are, at, are all at 250 a day. Oro Grande is at 225, Helendale is at 200 a day, and Snowline is at 200. In regards to long-term rates, only four of the eight currently offer a long-term rate. Uh, Victor L at 275, Apple Valley at 275, Oro Grande at 275, and Snowline at 225. So as, as several people have mentioned, there is a board item tonight that will increase it and the long-term rate will be uh, the best in the high desert. So I hope that this will alleviate some of the concern. I do wanna say thank you to the teachers and staff helping to support the coverage. Uh, you know, our, our job in HR is, is, uh, is sometimes challenging. I'd like to share some numbers. Uh, today we had 69 total absences of those 69, 33 were regular absences, meaning the other 36 were for, for other, other school business related items. Um, 14 were unfilled. And uh, you know th that's where the challenge comes in. Last Friday, we had, uh, I'm sorry, yesterday, we had 79 total absences with 51 that were unfilled, those are regular absences, and we had 19 unfilled. So, you know, those are some of the challenges that we are facing. And so, you know, I, I, I want to uh, assure the staff that we're doing everything possible um, to, to fill those, those positions. I know sometimes we just can't, uh, for whatever reason, subs, substitute employees also take days off. That's unfortunate. And so, you know, if, if this uh, item tonight passes, uh, I hope that this will put a dent in, in the number of openings we have each day. And uh, as, as Mr. Krauss mentioned, you know, I know the fall break is coming. You know, we want everyone who's off that time to get their well-deserved rest. We understand your job is very important and hard, um, especially in these circumstances. And so we want to assure you that we will continue to work hard to uh do everything we can to recruit more substitute teachers, get them trained. And I know uh, Dana and Alejandra and our staff are working uh, as, as, as hard as they can, recruiting, talking to people to, to sign up. We're, we're looking at, at even tonight, there's another item regarding hiring teachers on PIPs and STIP permits, which is, which is allowed by uh, Ed Code in California. So uh, those are a lot of positions that are being filled tonight. So 
Um, you know, our number now is down to six vacancies, vacant positions. And again, I uh, just wanted to assure all of us that uh, we're moving forward with the hopes that we will be able to, to uh, get to a good point where we're filling in all of our vacancies. And again, thank you for listening tonight. This concludes our HR comments. Thank you, Madam President. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go on to 11 gov governing board mem mem members reports and annou announcements. We'll start with Trustee Webb. Webster. Okay. All right. So the challenge. Um, good evening, everybody. Thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, communication is a word that I don't feel gets nearly enough credit in our society. Communication opens doors for growth, and it also opens doors for acknowledgement. I do want to say thank you to everybody who came out and communicated with our board tonight. I also want to say thank you for bringing this to our attention. It allows us to have a better perspective of the day to day. Um, I do want to make a special thank you to my cabinet team. I was aware of what was going on, and I do want to make a good thank you to Mr. Kraus, as I was aware that not only him, but other cabinet members took substitution classes in the last couple of weeks, correct? Okay. So I do want to say thank you to all involved. Um, this is a process and we are still healing. And our district, along with every other district, was challenged with adversity in the last few years. Um, it's not an excuse, but it is an understanding that we do have to get back up. We have to walk together and remain as strong as we did in the years that we were faced with adversity. So I do wanna say thank you to all of my AESD teachers, staff, and students, and I appreciate it. As we continue to move forward, we continue to communicate, and we continue to understand how we as a district can grow and get better. So thank you for your time tonight, and I can't wait to see some of you out there. Okay, thank, thank you, Tr Trustee Eckes. Well, I wasn't gonna say anything because I wanted to keep the meeting short, but I, I, I'm human, I have to speak. Um, I think we have proven time and time again that we all, we're here, we listen. Um, if anybody thinks we just come to these meetings on Tuesdays and go home and live a happy life, you're wrong. Being a board member is a 24 seven job. We don't take vacations. We don't, we don't get time off. Um, things happen every day, every day of the year, every day of the week. Um, I've had people ask me, don't you go on trips during the summer and stuff? No, we are board members. We work through the summer. We work through the good times, the bad times. We are always working because we love our job. We love what we do and we totally care or we would not be here. It would be easier to just run away, walk away. No, we love this district. We love our teachers. We love our staff and we are constantly trying to improve and develop. And I'm sure most people know there is a huge teacher shortage in California. All these problems are not just us, it's everybody. And we hear about it constantly. We do the best we can. Um, there's not a lot of teachers out there. There's a lot of them are retiring. They're quitting. They're transferring. We can't make people stay. Um, so we're doing the best we can to keep our district solvent and keep it going. And we want teachers. We want our classrooms filled. We want teachers in the classrooms. Um, it's hard on the kids. Um, I know personally when my kids were younger, my teacher, son's teacher was out almost the whole year and it really hurt my child's education. And I was devastated as a parent, but we got through it and we survived and things happen, life happens. So when you hear a lot of this negativity, I understand it, I get it. And if I need to talk to people one-on-one -on -one and try to explain to them on my level, what I think is going on, I'll be happy to do that, but I won't do it at a board meeting. Um, but I just want you to know, we do listen, we do care, We've proven that if there's a problem and it's brought to us, 
we are all over it and we will fix it immediately if we can. If we can't, we will do the best we can until we can fix it. Um, I just want the teachers to know you, we are thinking of you all the time. We're very aware of all the situations that are going on in our district and how it's affecting you. We may not be in the classroom. It may not be that close and personal, but then again, you're not where we are and knowing what we know and what's going on. So, you know, there's, we got to just give each other the benefit of the doubt, give each other some credit and just pray for the best. Um, again, we love this district, we love our employees, and we are doing everything we can to keep things going and keep them good. Um, I really don't want any more teachers to transfer, leave, retire, but again, you can't make anybody do anything. We're, I'm just asking that you please give it a second thought. Uh, we need you, we love you, we appreciate you. Um, as far as visiting schools, I do visit Columbia. I have been there several times. I know what's going on. But again, I'm only one person and I report back what I see and hear. And uh, while I'm there, I try to help. So, you know, we're a family. And if you have issues and problems, you're more than welcome to come to us, talk to us. We will do the best we can. But please know we do care. We are working hard. We're always on top of things. And we are not blind to any of this. And I do appreciate the phone calls, uh, the emails, the text, uh, people stopping and talking to me. Communication is extremely important. But tonight, I just really want to reiterate that we do care. We love this district. We are on it 24-7. It is on our hearts and minds all the time. And we are doing the best we can. And I just pray that our family will stick together, get us through this. And I know things are going to be awesome. There's so much hope and so much beauty. And I know a lot of you don't see it right now. But as a board, I know we do. And I am very encouraged about the future. So I'm just going to stay positive the most I can and just keep praying for our district. And again, just know we do care. We really care. If, if it doesn't look like we don't, I don't know where that's coming from, but talk to us individually. You know, you may catch us crying on your shoulder, but then again, we may turn around and, and inform you of all the beautiful things that are coming. So just want to throw that out there um, for people that maybe don't turn, tune in uh, normally on Zoom. Uh, we're not that bad. I think we're an awesome school district. I love this district. I think everybody's doing an awesome job. Uh, families have hard times and we stick together during those times. And I think we're going to pull through it. And I think we're going to do amazing. And I already feel we are. So yeah, we're having a couple bumps in the road, but we're getting through it. And I know we can get through it together. And again, I appreciate everybody. We love our teachers. We love our administrators, our staff, uh, our employees. All of you are our family and we care about every single one of you. So just wanted to throw that out there. Lots of love and just know that we are here for you and we care and we are listening. Um, thank you. Uh, Trustee Trust LaFrench. Well, I don't know how I'm going to come behind Holly saying all of that. <laughs> I do want to say good evening to everyone. And I do want to say that sometimes as a parent of a child in this district, being on the school board, you look and you say to yourself, I am going to come in here and I am going to change it tomorrow. I have spent many days, many days, even here crying, thinking, what can I do to help? What can I do? I'm a teacher first. I teach. I have schools now that classrooms cannot open because there's no one to teach those children. We are suffering in Head Start. I am suffering here at the district because we do not have teachers. I opened up my email and my telephone. If you have any suggestion, then talk to me. Like Holly, talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. I'll tell you my story as a parent that works 50 hours out the week, that dedicates my time to this school district to do anything that I can do, walk through the classrooms. I have been to Columbia. I even tasted the water at Columbia. Because when I hear you say, go here, go here, I say, okay, I'm going to use 
my vacation time. When I take off work, I take off my vacation to go to support my schools. I love this district. I had two children go through this district. So it's not that I don't care. It's not that we don't care. Right now, as a board, we're doing everything that we can. But if you have a suggestion for me, email me, call me. I will take that suggestion that you have and bring it up the ladder. Just call me. It's not that I say, uh, thank you for coming. I hear you. And that's just like a saying that I say, no, because the more that I talk, the more it's hurtful to hear that we don't have um, teachers or to hear that someone is in PE for half the day and things of that nature. If you have some suggestion, bring it to us. I have an open ear. I have a, I won't say open door policy because I don't work here per se, but I do send me an email and make contact with me. I'm open for any suggestions. Everyone have a wonderful fall break that I don't have. I'll be working next week. <laughs> but please take that time to regroup, to rest, to, um, I always say when you're in the trenches and you have, you know, so much going on, when you get that time to rest, don't be like me and watch TV half the day, right? Actually get some rest, you know, so you can have that energy because those children, they depend on all of us. They truly do. Thank you and have a restful fall break. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I am go going to not say words. I, um, we have Jen, Jen Jennifer Ray, Raider on the phone, and I am go go going to ye yield three of my min minutes for her so that she can fin finish what she wants to say. Mr. Sinatra, if you could ask Ms. Raider to please unmute and welcome her to the meeting. Ask her to unmute now. Just waiting. Thank you very much. I appreciate that very much. I just wanted to finish my remarks and thank you. <clears throat> Probably the one number one concern for all of our teachers is class size. With the amount of behavior problems and severe deficit of skills, most teachers are teaching a range of reading levels that goes as low as kindergarten, even in the middle school grades. With teachers having to prepare lessons and instruct for a range of at least five to six different levels in a single class, Having the classes packed fully means that teachers' time and attention are fragmented. Class disruptions are constant. I cannot imagine another job anywhere where the clients intentionally and repeatedly interfere with the transmission of the job being done for them. To this, we can't find enough credentialed teachers because we make significantly less, $10,000 a cord less than neighboring districts. to Zetaland with the most challenging district students and salary. Uh, Miss, Miss Raid, Raid Raider, you're break, breaking up. Competition and hire less qualified teach people at teacher's wages. A credential matters. We are not babies emails. I don't think she can hear me. Okay, sorry. No, it's they okay. Your 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 just breaks breaking some up. Some of the terrific projects and lessons that your teachers are putting to yes money on today's. In our coffers are accumulated monies of many years. All those years, the students were getting their, and we have a high reserve because of it. For a change, let's spend the. On this year's students. We have the potential of being old I can't. Enough I counselors. Can't. We lack enough psychologists. We lack enough teachers. Teachers are leaving our district for other districts too. It's not enough to say let them go. They don't care about our kids. They but you, you can only abuse people for so long before they reach the breaking point. Let's make ASD the envy of the high desert rather than a stepping stone to other districts. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Okay, uh, that is it for gov governing reports.
Uh, let's go on to 12 staff re reports and presentation biz business services, 12.001 re review of the dis district pool ren ren renovation by PBKR Architects. Yes, thank you, Madam President, members of the board, members of the community this evening. I'd like to call our partners up to the podium, and I'll be going out there to uh, also uh, work with them on the presentation for our district pool. Give an update. I'm going to have them introduce themselves while Mr. Sinatra is pulling up the pool presentation for us. Good evening, Board of Trustees and Senior Cabinet and uh, the community members uh, present in person and online. My name is Lisa Cox. I am a Principal Architect from PBK Architects and uh, happy to be joining you this evening to give you the progress on the, the pool renovation project that we're preparing for this district. Great, and also I just wanna be like. I would've hit too. Hi, I'm Mike Woods with CPM. I'll be the uh, construction manager. Thank you, Mike. So the board had approved CPM a while back uh, to work with our uh, partners on the pool, and then they also approved uh, PBK to do the architect. So uh, architecture for it. So next slide, if you will, Mr. Sinatra. I appreciate you uh, pushing these forward. So we want to give a visual representation this evening of the current status of our pool. Uh, it's been down for several years. Uh, there's many reasons why it is in the shape it has been in, but Mainly over the last many years, uh, at some point it was transferred to salt water from fresh water and salt water, as you might know, corrodes a lot of the uh, pipes, a lot of the infrastructure of a pool. And that is one of the issues that we faced among many others that uh, the team of, of uh, the architects and the uh, CPM firm have been working with Mr. Richard Krenchen in our MO department as well on how we can move forward and make this pool the, the shining star of uh, Adelanto. And so you can see there, that's the uh, current picture before the water was drained. Next photo. And you can see again, just what it looked like uh, before we drained the water, but just kind of the situation that we're facing as far as the status of the pool itself. It's a fairly large pool, a very nice sized pool. And I know in the past, people have really enjoyed using it. And so we're going to bring that back. Next slide. So this is the uh, pool building. This is part of our renovation as well. You'll see some uh, um, renditions here in a few minutes of what we think this all could look like. So next one. Here's our pool pump. And that's one of the issues too, in order to have a pool and a nice clean pool, you got to have a pool pump that works and that's updated and that does not have parts that are rusting due to salt and other corrosives. And so you can kind of see there that pool pump is uh, very old and dilapidated. So that's part of the renovation as well. Next, next photo. Here you see our bathrooms, our current bathrooms, the, uh, uh, you know, nice 1970s, early 80s uh, decor there. So you might find that in a in a house somewhere. Stories. But uh, we're uh, working on uh, uh, that's part of the renovations as well as updating our, our bathrooms at the, at the in the pool building. So we're excited about that. Next slide. So I'm going to now turn it over to Lisa because here is a nice rendition. Lisa, if you want to just talk about some of the things that you and your team have been uh, reviewing. Sure thing. Thank you, Mr. Krauss. So. I'd like to share just the progress of, of where we've come from the beginning of project uh, through today, through our schematic design. We've met with uh, our team and the district staff and reviewed the goals for the project, what the district is looking for in the way of scope, schedule, and budget. Those are the three uh, components of, of every project that we pursue. We've done an assessment through visiting this facility and evaluating the, the prior reports that were prepared, doing uh, additional investigations and looking at what it would take not only to renovate this uh, just in, in its finishes and features, but also in our code compliance. So there are components, as you might understand, over time, rules change. So when, when this project was built so many years ago, since then, a lot of the regulations have changed. So there are certain things that we will look at updating to comply with the current code through this process. And in some cases, those items can help uh, be a way to improve the practicality and functionality of the space as well. We have a few renderings here um, as well as a site plan. So this is just a general uh, view of what of what it might look like. And I'll point out some of the features on the next slide. So looking at the overall site plan, 
one of the things I was talking about as far as code compliance, the pool currently has four ladders, the kind that you have to turn around backwards and climb into the pool. And those ladders are fine, except uh, by today's standards, you also need to have stairs that you can walk into the building. So we need to add stairs at a one component. So what we talked about is how this pool is used now. And I understand it's not used as a lap pool. It's more of a recreational lounge pool for a lot of children. So what we've done is we've take, we're proposing having the, the stair implement implemented along the whole southern end of the pool. So it allows a larger area for smaller children to lounge and enjoy the pool and create shallower spaces for them to enjoy that. It also provides the compliance necessary uh, through the, the local agencies as well. Next, please. This is a summary slide of the different components we're looking at throughout the site. We have existing light standards there with um, old failing uh, lighting components. So those will be updated to LED, which will save uh, energy and, and be more efficient in the way that they light that space for safety and security in the, in the evening hours. We'll replace the, the lifeguard towers and um, the entire concrete deck as a whole, the existing concrete will be replaced. Another code compliant component is the perimeter. The current fencing around this pool is standard chain link fencing. And the size of the mesh that's on there is considered climbable, which makes it non-compliant with the local health department. So the fencing needs to be replaced. So this is one of the areas where we're offering options as we go forward. So we can replace it for a more economical option with another chain link that has a much tighter mesh. It's a one inch square, so toes can't fit in it and it's considered non-climbable. Or we can um, enhance that by going to a block wall, which helps with screening and privacy for access to that use, but also complies with the non-climbable component. Another nice feature that we're looking at is providing shade out there. There's a lot of open deck area, which has great sun exposure, but uh, most people who enjoy a pool like a little shade as well. So there's different types of shade options that uh, are available. And what we're proposing is a uh, pre-engineered structure to help save costs. So this is something that's uh, more readily available and, and uh, predetermined, uh, but we have some options there in looking at the roofing type. So it can be a mesh, a fabric roof that helps provide shade, which is a more economical option, or there uh, can be a pre-finished metal roof, which would also shield you, um, it, it'd be a stronger shield from the sun, but it also shields you from any inclement weather of rain if you had that as well. Uh, depending on which approach you take and, and the available budget, we can uh, show that on one side of the pool or on both. Right now, what we're showing is a system that is cantilevered. So the columns are only on one side of the structure. So that leaves the area between the shade and the pool all open. So there's nothing for any of the users to, to run into. The, the structure's at the back and it, and it just hangs out over the pool deck. And then also on the building itself, um, there's currently an old drinking fountain. So that would be replaced with a, an accessible high-low fountain, as well as adding a bottle filling com component, because most people carry their water bottles around, and this would be a, an easy way to, to refill a water bottle as well. Okay, next slide. So as a part of our assessment process, we, um, with the assistance of the, con the construction manager, had a contractor go out and remove the vinyl liner that had been placed there uh, as a retrofit condition over the years to try to take a look at what the existing condition was below that. And here you can see a little bit of how that is. There's still a little uncertainty in what's beneath those layers, but we're anticipating those changes and planning for that uh, in the, the future development. Next. So this is a proposed view of this, a similar angle of what you just saw. So in this version, it's showing the block wall perimeter with a gate to the, the northern grass area. You can see the, the lifeguard towers, the full stairs across the, the left-hand side there. And in this view, it's showing the two shade structures with the fabric tops. Next, please. Again, a view from the north to the south with the pool as it looks today. Next. And a proposed alternate. So in this scenario, it is the metal roof on the shade structure and the smaller diameter uh, opening for the chain link fence. 
Next. Next slide, please. Again, just working through more angles of the same items, showing the alternatives from the same view with the different fencing type, what it does for screening to the, the preschool adjacent and where we would have that shade. Looking north with the chain link and just the metal roof structure on the left. Another angle. Again. So in these different renderings, it's, it's all very similar, but it shows you those few different options that we're looking at uh, in the finishes here based on the final budget. Yep. CMU wall. Okay. Before, before Lisa talks about the schedule, I, I did have to get a dose of reality from the architects and uh, the uh, CPM firm because I had a overly, I was very overly optimistic that we could get this done by next summer. That was the, and they will tell you that um, they had to bring me down to earth because I did give them those instructions and um, I got these weird looks like, are you kidding me? And so, uh, but I understand that there are time timelines and things that have to be done. And so they did a great job of creating a schedule. So Lisa is going to give you a, a tentative timeline that the team has been looking at as far as the uh, next steps in the process potentially. Thank you. So as this shows here, these are our standard phases that any construction project goes, or design rather, uh, any design project goes through. You start with schematic design. And what I'm sharing you with you today is the conclusion of that schematic design effort and what we've done. The next stage is design development. And the design development stage will go in and look a little more detailed at the systems, exactly what type of pool equipment it'll be, uh, how, how that will integrate and work in, making some of those final selections on finishes and materials. Uh, the next stage is construction drawings and specifications. That's where we get into the, the fine detailed line work necessary for a contractor to actually bid the project. So it comes with two components. There's a drawing component, which is the construction drawings. And then specifications is actually a, a book that describes uh, literally every word of how those construction measures are supposed to be implemented, what finishes are supposed to be selected, and how they're supposed to be implemented into the final construction of the project. And then once those documents are prepared, they'll be submitted to the city for review and approval, as well as the local uh, health department through the county. And once both agencies have a reviewed and approved the project, then the documents will be put out to bid to your local contractors. Uh, that bid will be opened and those awards will come back to you for approval. Once the bids are approved, then we enter the construction phase. Within the construction phase now, we have another element. It's always been there, but now it's much more prevalent than it used to be. And it's something called procurement. <laughs> As we've seen with the pandemic in the last few years, getting a hold of almost anything is so much more challenging than it has ever been. So this stage in our construction schedule is much longer than it ever used to be, but it's it's rightly so. We and uh, for us to assume that anything can be available sooner than that is is. Um, Foolish, because that is not our reality today. So this schedule gives quite a lengthy time. So from once the point the project is awarded and the contractor gets on board, they provide all of their submittals. We get those reviewed and then they order. So they're not even actually starting work for quite some time while they're waiting for their supplies and materials to come in. And then the project actually begins uh, and then the work can be completed and it'll be open. So with all of this in mind, we're looking at having it open um, late spring, early summer uh, in 24, in May of 24, April, May of 24 right now. That is our current plan. And that's it. Okay, board, do you have questions? questions? Yes, I sure do. Okay, so one of my first questions is uh, the walls. Are they gonna be a higher or high enough so that people cannot uh, climb over them from the outside? So the requirement is a minimum of six feet. 
Uh, they can be taller if you so desire. The higher they are, the more they cost, um, but they will absolutely be a minimum six feet and non-climbable because that is the code requirement. Okay, good. The reason why I'm asking is, of course, as trustees, we're always worried about liability. Absolutely. So, of course, we want them nice and high so we can avoid any possible drownings from of course. the outside. Okay, second of all, fabric tops. They don't do very well in our high deserts. I know anybody who's gone out and bought in a gazebo or a canopy made out of uh, uh, fabric, it's gone within a couple months, you know, and I but know, clarify, yeah, I, I know you're talking heavy duty ones, but again, I'm thinking within five, 10 years, they might be just completely shredded. But if you've got some kind of fancy, smancy ones, I'm good with that. If not, I'm thinking maybe plastic or metal, but I'm going to, of course, that's your job. I sure. just wanted to throw that in. Um, next, uh, the cement around the pool. I'm hoping it'll be pitted or designed where for slippage. Absolutely. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of the smooth cement where kids run and they're all over the place and everybody slips. So that is something I, I know I would personally like to see. Um, and then uh, the feet of the pool, is it going to be, I think it's four feet now. I'm not sure. Is it going to be a, a sloped and how deep will it be? So to speak to, to each of your items, um, starting with the structure. The structures that we're talking about are engineered for your winds out here. They're designed for those wind loads and, and structures are, um, are designed to take on the loads of, of those forces. The fabric obviously will have a much shorter lifespan than a metal roof structure will, but it comes at half the cost. So you weigh in, you know, life cycle, if, if you're shorthanded up front on the cost, then that's a good alternative. But if you say, no, I want something that's gonna have a much longer lifespan and I can afford to take care of that now, then I would definitely recommend the metal. The fabric structures that we're proposing have a lifespan of about 10 years. And then the fabric itself can be replaced and the structure will still last. The structure is still a pre-coated uh, steel and is in great shape. You would just replace the fabric uh, at that time. With regard to the finished surface, uh, it absolutely has to be non-slip. That's also our code requirement. So there's a, a certain coefficient of friction that we're required to comply with. So you definitely won't have any issues with, with slippage there. Regarding the depths of the pool, we are not changing that. Uh, so it's currently approximately three feet on each of the long, the short ends, and then it goes to about uh, four, four and a half in the center. Mm -hmm. The depths are not changing. We are refinishing it. We'll have a new stucco finish in there. Um, also, I didn't mention earlier, uh, at, at the water line, at the top of that, we'll have a new tile. So that's a good way to maintain the stucco. So it sits on a tile piece, which I'm sure if any of you have a pool at home, you'll see that's kind of a, a customary thing. This pool did not have that. So that's something that will be implemented as well. So the top portion around the interior will have a tile that's appropriate for uh, the water type. And then the, the surface below that will uh, be new stucco. Okay. And then the foot of the uh, footage that the will also be labeled in the tile Absolutely. and on top of the cement. So you can see it from yes. the top. Okay, great. I like that too. Yes. Um, last thing I just want to add, I don't know if you know the history of the pool. Um, it was put in many, many, many years ago when this district was very new. And it was put in by a superintendent who I believe was in the Navy. And one of his goals of our district was to teach every child how to swim. I believe that was in fourth grade, possibly. And I thought that was amazing. I've never heard of a school district do that before. And I think it's wonderful because a lot of adults, a lot of people don't know how to swim. And if you can learn that and we can advertise that in our district, that's a big plus for everybody. That, and if we can implement that and have like every fourth, fifth grader uh, with parents' permission sign up to teach them how to swim, I was concerned about the depths of the pool because I know it was set up a certain way. And I do want us to be able to teach children how to swim in that pool if we can pull that together because that's pretty much what the purpose was of the pool. So if we can pull that off and make that happen, I think it's just a win-win for everybody. And I am super excited because I really want to bring that back, you know, having kids learn how to swim. So, and then of course, recreation in the summer, but yeah, how wonderful to be able to teach kids how to survive in water. So I'm excited. I really am. But anyway, I'm done with my questions and thank you very much. I like all your answers. Uh, trustees, <laughs> any other trustees? No, I don't have any questions. No. Very thorough. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I do like the DNA to see the greenery without having those.
the, the brick wall, let's say, but that's so far down the line that you know, can say that for another time. <laughs> Yeah, I have a few questions. Um, on your your um, slideshow, you mention how we need to update the bathrooms. You mention how we need to update the um, different parts of this facility, but I'm not seeing a really strong representation of your idea for say our bathrooms or the back of our facilities and in your displays it doesn't look like you're putting too much effort into the building itself could you further elaborate on what your plans are for that she's looking for me because the the original slideshow was uh, at least 55 to 60 slides and <laughs> could there I were... emailed that one Yes, yes, ma'am, absolutely. We just condensed it for the board meeting this evening, and uh, but they did do an exhaustive presentation on the buildings. More, there were several on the buildings that went very much into detail on that. Um, but for the sake of the presentation itself, uh, we did condense it to the Reader's Digest version just to give a broad overview to the board and the community this evening. So, so that's why Lisa. Is, that's why Lisa is smiling at me. <laughs> it's your fault, Mr. Kraus. I do have copies with me that I can leave with you as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, no, I, you know, I am excited. Excited. We have to be pay patient. I know we we want wanted this done sooner, but I would prefer to have it done correctly so that it's for the long term, so that it's beyond us. You know, mm -hmm. so we'll just have to be patient. Patient. Thank. Thank you. Absolutely. Could we go for like December twenty twenty three? Christmas time? Why not? Merry oh, Christmas. The, the schedule that we have is what we anticipate, but I, what I want to clarify is that we're not taking our time to fall on that schedule. We're doing everything as fast as possible. So if we can beat that schedule, we will. Uh, we're, there's just a lot of components of it that are outside of our control. I got two more questions. Sure. Is it heated and is there lights in it? Yeah. Uh, there are not lights in the pool. There are lights on the pool deck okay. and uh, the heater that is there now will be removed. And we were told there was not a need to add it back in. Okay. Okay. Could we? It's additional cost, but yes, <laughs> everything impacts a budget. You know, we could go swimming in December. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. I'll stop. Thank okay. you. Are there any, any other quick questions? No. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you. Yay. Thank you, members of the board. Okay. So, all right. Let, let's go on to thir 13, uh, adopt, adoption of the min minutes. Uh, 13.001, board min minutes approved as writ written and or order filled. Reg regular board meet meeting of September 27th, 2022. Can I get a mo motion to approve? Yes. Can I get a sec second? Five second? Can I get a vote, please? Trustee Webster. Aye. Trustee LaFrench. Aye. Trustee Eckes. Aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Motion passes for zero. Move, move, moving on to the consent agenda. We are taking items 14.02 through 14.30 minus item 14.04 that had been pulled pre previously. Does an, any trustee want to pull an item? No. I want to pull 14.24. Okay. Trustee Webster wants to pull 0.24. Does any other trustee want to pull? No. I do not. Okay. So I need a motion motion to approve the remain remaining I items um, mine, minus 14.04 and 14. 14.24. Can, can I get a mo motion? Echoes my motion. Can I get a sec second? Webster, I second. And can I get a vote, please? Trustee Webster. Aye. Trustee LaFrench. Aye. 
Trustee Eckes. Aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Mo, mo motion pa passes four zero. Okay, go going on back. We're gonna do the I, I items pulled from the agenda. agenda. So for 14.24, I need a mo motion to approve. Webster, I motion to approve and discuss. Okay, and I need a sec second. Love French. Okay, we're op open for di discussion. Discussion. I pulled this item mostly because I just wanted to make a special shout out to our cabinet for making this um, come come to light. I know this was a controversy that we had been discussing for a while, and I just appreciate all your hard work and bringing it here. Thank you, HR, I believe. Um, so thank you very much. And that's it. Can okay. we take the vote? Okay. Christy. Can we take a vote? <laughs> Trustee Webster. Aye. Trustee uh, LaFrench. Aye. Trustee Eckes. Aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Motion passes 4 0. All right. Go, going on to 6 16, pol policy introductions, updates, and read readings. 6 16.01, Ac Academic Serve. Services adopt and approve the se se second read for board pol policy 6158 and add admin administrative reg regulation 6158 for independent study. Can I get a mo motion to approve? What? I second. Okay, La French, sorry. And second, I guess. Okay, we're open for discussion. Discussion. Hearing none, call the vote. Trustee Webster. Aye. Trustee LaFrench. Aye. Trustee Eckes. Aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Motion passes for zero. Six sixteen point zero two. Academic serve services approve the fir first read of AESD board policy. BP 531.2 and admin administrative regulation AR 531.2 bullying. I need a mo motion to approve. I guess. I need a sec second. Webster. We're open for discussion. discussion. I'm still so happy this is coming. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, we need this. Yes, thank you. And that's all I got to say. Okay, call for the vote. I'm, I'm going to take my time on this one. Trustee Webster. <laughs> Trustee Webster. I... Tr Trustee LaFrench. Um, Trustee Agus. I Trustee Benz. Benz, I. Motion passes for zero. Go going on to adjournment. I need a motion to approve. I guess. And I need a sec second. Okay, mm -hmm. please call for the vote. Trustee Webster. Aye. Trustee LaFrench. Aye. Trustee Eckes. Aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. The time is now 8 17. The vote, vote is for zero. zero. Please have a good night. We're usually going to close this. <laughs> <laughs> right? We killed it tonight. Wow. Talk about getting better. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait.